the three speed Tom's old bike uh, it's haven't even washed it yet you can see that's where the kickstand was down in the sand the other one was like that I sanded it and painted it and uh, <clears throat> tires are flat we'll see if they pump up I'm gonna rinse it off and get busy on this one This one's a three-speed, it's a Sears Roebuck and Company. Probably about the same age, 1960s. Let's see, it's certified and it's, uh, it's got the little Sears emblem on there. So we'll get this one going to you. Stan's Workshop, July 7th, 2022. Working on another bike here. This was my brother-in-law's bike. Uh, Tom was his name, and uh, <clears throat> he passed away a couple of years ago. He was an airline pilot and uh, mechanic and flight engineer and everything. He was a smart guy, but uh, and that's my sister's bike. Uh, so they had these two little bikes. That one's a Montgomery Ward's Hawthorne, and this one's a Sears. Sears Roebuck and Company. This is a three speed, and this one's going to need some work. Uh, I'll probably take apart that three speed hub there. It's like a little transmission. I forget how they work, but I did it when I was probably 10 or 12. I, I took one of those apart and figured out how it all worked, put it back together. But you can see it's been sitting there and sat for 20 years underneath their house in a kind of a storeroom and you know dirt floors and sand floors and so that sitting in the sand for 20 years never moved now I got them so I think I'll start by uh, greasing up this crank like I did the other one and then get busy on that the hub uh, this chain is it nearly as bad as that other one was yeah, that other one was just like a big blob of grease. <laughs> it was horrible. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, wheels are a little bit, they got a little bit of play. I think I can snug up those bearings some. And, and uh, we'll true the wheels if they need it. I'm not sure uh, if they, that yeah, looks pretty true there. And, uh, let's see this one here. It's looking pretty true also. Okay. Take off the uh, three-speed cable here. Got to get that unscrewed. Get that unscrewed. Then this just screws off here. This is, it's like a, I think it's a push, like a push mechanism. It pushes that pin which shifts the gears inside the hub we got a little lock nut there get that off and then this uh, the main nut pretty caked up there but I think it's gonna come off okay We'll uh, get this all taken apart here, and it doesn't seem to be too bad. There's another lock nut there, so you can see the threads here, uh, has bigger threads there, smaller threads here. Washer under that one. Yeah, this one actually is in pretty bad shape. It's uh, it's hard to turn. You can hear those bearings in there, and you know those clickers in there that catch when uh, when you. Well, that's this. You can hear those, but that, that's terrible. Too tight and everything. So. There we go. 
I thought this might be fun to dig out. This is the wrench that my dad had in the garage in his uh, his drawer there, and he, he said, that's the wrench you get to use. He wouldn't let me use any of his tools, but he let me use this to work on my bike. <laughs> uh, thing weighs about five pounds. So there's the bearing race. Came out of there. There's the dried out bearings. This uh, just slides out and it's got these little clickers. They, uh, when you're coasting, they, they click, they go and then they spring out and they catch. Inside of there they catch and so you can uh, pedal forward. But you can coast and they'll click and then they'll, they'll catch in the forward motion. That bearing. That bearing's pretty, uh, you see those? That bearing is pretty sticky, kind of dried out. You can see the gears in there, how, how that works. Now I gotta figure this out, but that's how you get your three speeds somehow. I'm gonna figure that out. I had to put some uh, a lock, two lock two nuts on that shaft to be able to get this loose over here because I don't have a uh, I don't have a wrench that sat thin. See the black one in the back I don't, to hold that. I don't have a wrench that thin, so put those lock nuts on there and. Uh, Let's see if we can get it off that way. So that actually didn't come apart like I thought, but the whole bearing race is screwing out. And you can see there's a spring right there. Those three pieces, there's the race. And this uh, special washer, it has these deals it catches that and locks that in and then this goes on the top there's the spring okay well I can't get that axe allowed it's this gears down in there and stuff so I'm gonna have to consult YouTube see if I can find anything about how to get this hub apart Pretty complex little uh, gizmo here. Uh, you see, you can see those gears turning and stuff down in there. Uh, it's a little three-speed transmission in in a hub. Okay, I watched a uh, few YouTube videos that actually put me to sleep. But this is so complex, and you need a special tool to take these innards out and there's a bunch of gears and stuff so I'm just gonna squirt this thing out get the get the old grease and junk oil whatever dirt out of there and re-lube it and put it back together from this point I'm in big trouble now these two little uh, pins they fell out then the axle came out and what those do, they push back and forth and uh, just switch your gears. I don't know how to get them back down in there. They're, uh, I think they ride against that ring down in there. But how do you get them back in there? And I don't know which one's which. One's shorter than the other. So. That uh, goes down in there. Looks like the long one may go on this end, and the short one probably goes down on this side there. 
But how to get them in there, that's, that's the other question. Chain's a mess. Uh, I'm going to soak it in some acetone, I think, or probably use a degreaser on it first and hose it down and some acetone. But uh, just thinking about this, uh, my dad said it was a it was a monkey wrench, big monkey wrench. So that's what a monkey wrench is, I guess. Come to think of it, he probably worked on his Model A with that wrench. Yeah, we got the hub all back together. That was a trip. I lost this little part and it was lost down inside the hub. I finally found it. Tore the I cleaned up all that. Thought it fell back there. Uh, straightened out all those boards, pulled all that stuff out. It wasn't back there, it was stuck down inside the hub. It's a little uh, pin like, and, and uh, it actually what it does, there's two of them, and they capture uh, a gear. And when uh, that pin over here, when the cable pulls this, and when that pin uh, pushes in, it, it moves that gear back and forth against the spring. So that's how you get your three gears in there. So I let the chain soak overnight in degreaser. It looks pretty clean. I'm gonna hose it off and then uh, spray it again with some. Uh, actually, I use the carburetor cleaner, which is actually acetone. Maybe I'll use more acetone. But uh, get that together, ready to roll. It's June. What is this? June eighth. 2022 Stan's Workshop. Look at all that gunk that came off. And that acetone works great for cleaning parts. Speaking of gunk, I was looking for an old can of gunk, probably from the 50s, that uh, came in a can like that. But you can see that's maybe it was eaten through the can. I had to get rid of it. But. Uh, this is a can just like that. You can see an old V Ward's Vitalized Engine Tone Upper Cylinder Lubricant Montgomery Ward. And what in the heck is that? It's probably a 1950s DeSoto or something. <laughs> cool. I wish I still had that can of gunk. It was full too. Never been used. Nice clean chain. A little compressed air. Now I gotta tackle this. <clears throat> Quite a mess. Kinda sticky. Always remember, one of these pedals is a uh, reverse thread. And it happens to be this one on this side. And I don't understand that because as you're pedaling, the pedal goes like this and it would unscrew it on this side. So, yep. So I don't know why this is the reverse thread. It's backwards. Those are rusted in there. And that's a reverse thread too. I don't get it because as you're pedaling this way, you don't want that to unscrew. Well, if it's a reverse thread, uh, let's see. So this is going that way. Uh, yeah, it, it would unscrew. So. I don't understand. Maybe they didn't think it through before they designed this thing. Okay, that washer comes out. There. Then what else? There's a lock, uh, lock nut. You gotta knock that loose uh, with a screwdriver and a hammer. Uh, maybe not. It, it'll turn. I just need to press it. Uh, of course, I was turning it the wrong way. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, so you're pedaling this way. Then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's, that would unscrew the bearings. I'll have to ask some uh, bicycle repair guy what that's about. 
So that's uh, that's screwing out of there backwards, of course. I don't know, maybe I entered into an alternate universe where everything's backwards. Uh, that's the bearing race. Boy, it's <laughs> that grease is like glue. Ah, okay, and this is going to slip out here once I take off the chain guard. He had to dig out all my SAE wrenches. I haven't worked at anything this old in a while. I've been working with metric for... It's all metric stuff there. Uh, <clears throat> you know, foreign cars, that's all it seems like all we've been buying lately. So, Toyotas is what I buy. They never break. Got 275 on my car, 275,000. 185 on the van, which van's actually a uh, 93. Runs like a charm. I'm gonna put new struts and springs in the front. It uh, bottoms out now when I go off a curb or something. Uh, that one's got 275,000. That's a 2002. I'm driving it out east, probably out as far as Virginia and Florida sometime soon. Got a bed. I put a bed in the back. Okay, and that just. Uh, slips right out of there, at least it's supposed to, just like that. Another dried out bearing there. On that side, gunked up with glue. Set that over here. And, uh, there's another, you can just see it's just like glue on there. That old grease they used to use. I'm using Molly grease, which they're using uh, CV axles on cars. I, I've rebuilt a bunch of those uh, back in the day when they used to break. They, they finally figured out how to make those rubber boots on CV joints so they don't rip up at 20,000 miles. Uh, now, mine have gone for like I say 275,000 and they're still good. Don't leak a bit. Might as well take up in this front wheel while I got the wrench out. And, uh, that's no problem. No reverse threads or nothing. That's still goofy. That that crank business. I gotta gotta ask somebody or Google it maybe. Because I think the other one was like that too. But uh probably these bearings are probably all glued up to old petrol grease I think I have a grease gun down there with some of that in it you used to have to grease all your your zerk fittings on your cars every 10,000 miles or something now they're all sealed bearings and stuff so Yeah, that wheel should pop out of there, but let's see what's it stuck on now. There, okay. Front wheel ready for repair. Put it over here. This, uh, <laughs> I'm amazed how filthy, dirty, rusty, I think the races are still good. I'm not going to worry about it. And they uh, hit them with some really fine sandpaper. But like 600 grit. I opted for some quadruple aught fine steel wool. See if that'll clean these up. Seems to be working. Get most of that crud out of there. Yeah, that's pretty clean. A little bit of rust in there, but 
that's not in the race that's just back behind it on the casing so uh, that should do get the other side done and clean the bearings and clean the sprocket and grease it up and set the uh, set the bearings you know the uh, what do you call it I don't even know what you call it you tighten them up so they're not too tight and not too loose so there's no wobble in the crank so I was out to lunch with Mr. Uh, I think he's Mr. Haney. I'm not sure. I think I'm Mr. Ziffel. Or Mr. Bucklewartz, uh, Calvin, Sandy, Paulo. He's got lots of names. But I'm out to lunch and we went to this little Mexican place across the street here called Tacos Baqueros, which means Tacos of the Cowboys. And everything's in Spanish and they speak Spanish and they got... A uh, statue there. It looks like Jesus, with uh, but it's actually I think it's Saint Jude. Somebody told me because he's wearing green. And, and Calvin says, "Well, they probably just used the same statue. I uh, just painted a different color for a different saint, <laughs> whatever." So anyway, uh, I warn him, man. They got these roasted jalapenos that come on your plate, and uh, they are so hot. I took one little bite. My mouth was burning for an hour. Nothing helped, you know. I drank all that pink, whatever that stuff is they had there in their fountain drinks. And uh, nothing helped. But anyway, he goes, oh, I love that stuff. I'll eat them. So he, he ate about two of those and said, man, those are even hot for me. And I'm going to take them home and eat them later and crush them up or something. Make salsa, whatever. I said, well, or peel some paint. Hey, Calvin, I need some of that stuff, some of those jalapenos or whatever they were to get get this gunk out of here. There, bearing races are clean. Uh, so anyway, like I said, Calvin, he has a bunch of names, but I prefer Calvin because my dad's name, middle name is Calvin. Right there, Robert Calvin Houston. What a good guy. I still have all his uh, stuff here and I love it. He made that bench when I was about seven years old and I used to blow up stuff and, you know, make little fire bombs they didn't know about. Uh, <clears throat> there's a big black spot underneath where I almost caught the thing. Well, I did catch it on fire because the, the bomb leaked. I had lit it and it leaked and all over the bench and I ran upstairs get some water or whatever came down had to put it out but he turned those boards over and I uh, I put that melamine on the top there so talking about my dad for a minute here he uh, he got my cousins and uh, he had everybody working for him except for me I was too little but I'm the youngest of the whole family of that generation but uh, he got Terry working for him, who became an architect. That was the oldest cousin. Then he got, uh, we call him Sonny. His name's Chuck Charles, after his father, Charles Des Moines. And he got him working for him, and he became an architect. He just retired. He was the project manager on the big federally funded project downtown Denver. He was the project manager, then he retired. Uh, Let's see, who else? Uh, my brother became an architect and he worked for commercial, uh, he's Robert S. Houston. He worked for American con Company on big uh, commercial projects, you know, government projects, even like missile stuff, I think, and secret, top secret stuff I never, he couldn't tell me about. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's that was my father and he never even went to college for an architect license. He, he learned to draw out in San Diego during the war. He went out there and they, they taught him how to draft. They were drafting war planes. They were, I think it was, uh, no, I don't know if it was consolidated aircraft. They did uh, cargo planes during the war. Then he came back here and started drawing house plans and whatever, and he designed enough buildings and stuff that they grandfathered him an architect's license. And then he got everybody else started. And those are his old cabinets he had in his office there. And he liked these doors. He would make 
tabletops out of them. They're great. I was just thinking back talking to uh, about Charles Des Moines. His younger brother is Leon Des Moines, who now goes by Leon Little Bird. Leon Joseph Little Bird. And uh, he, uh, he plays Indian music in the mountains. He's really good. He, uh, he sings, plays guitar, plays Indian flutes. And he's pretty popular up there in the mountains, but uh, nobody, I don't know if anybody knows he's really a Des Moines or not a, a little bird, which one guy uh, playing Indian flute and, and they, uh, <clears throat> he told me he thought little bird was tribal. Little bird actually came from the little bird that uh, his dad was an artist and he was French and he used a little bird on all his paintings. That was his little logo. That's one of his uh, Charles Des Moines paintings from 1942. My very favorite is during the war, it's so ominous, but down here you'll see his little bird right there. And I got that reflection in the glass. There, there's his little birds. He's got two of them there. And uh, there's a couple more down on that one. These are some of his later works. I've got a bunch of his paintings around here. Little birds down there. That's one I did in uh, beginning drawing class. That's Bodie, the ghost town. It's it's a national park, you can go take the tours there. 20,000 people lived there at one time. They had two, over 200 saloons, uh, and uh, <clears throat> most of the town burned down in fires, but they all left during the Depression, and they thought they were gonna come back when things changed, and they left their stuff there. You can go in, some of the houses still have their furniture, and you know, old wood, handmade furniture. And the hardware store is still stocked. You look through the windows, the shelves are still stocked. And, the, uh, the coffins up there, it, the mortuary is still there. You go in and look at those coffins, they're all little. And you see, it's because people were pretty short and the tall ones, they just fold them over and put them in a small coffin because they had to dynamite a hole in the ground to bury these people. They died mostly in their 20s from, uh, you know, mercury mine, poisoning in the mines. And uh, from, uh, their teeth would go bad. And that would kill them. But I did this in a beginning drawing class. We just took a little, uh, what was it? A little four by three by four photograph, whatever, and uh, sectioned it off and then blew it up big. And, and uh, that was kind of my last project in that class. I never took any more uh, or drew any more, but that's that. I love old stuff. Then we got a little history here. Uh, sorry, take a little break from the mechanics, but I made this when I was living in Monterey. I had made another one, gave it to Sally and my sister, and there's a little mouse he's eating there amongst the mushrooms. And I made that for my mom when I was probably, I don't know, 12 or 13 or something. It says, uh, Unga Bunga. Uh, by Stan Houston. I thought it said made in China or something, but uh, <clears throat> sculptures of did in high school. Now this one, my friend Peter Wirtz, he, he he did a skit. When we were in Lake Tahoe, we had a Christian coffee shop there, and he he put on this skit, and they were dressed in monk robes, and they sang this song he did. It's really funny, yeah. Bugs of old in under doses peak. They had the books, they had the looks of spirit is life, but the letter could kill if looks could kill with all the dead in a weekend. I got twelve precious stones on my breastplate. Oh song and love and the handle of my sword. I got friends living with me in the forest. Oh waiting for their prophet's great reward. But it's gonna be dark again. The clouds will bring no rain. Waiting for, for the, the coming, coming of the Lord. Lord. When the face turned blue, and I 
Yeah, wouldn't you if you come unglued? But I seen got switched, nobody got hitched. Boo. Sit down to a feast with the kings of the east and you get the food. That's all you get, you get a bunch of wolves. So that's that. I made a bunch of these. I had an assembly line going. I think this is the last remaining one that didn't get broken or something or given away. That was Tarkas from the album uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Uh, you know, during uh, maybe a senior year in high school. I'll show you that album. <laughs> 